today we are making slow cooker brisket. I've got my 1980s cooker ready to go. I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com where I share keto and carnivore recipes and other cooking ideas. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you like today's video on the brisket and uh, please do check out some of my other videos. If you don't know me, um, I have been keto for a number of years and have lost over 125 pounds. For those of you returning, welcome back. And I hope you like today's video as well. Okay, so I am going to uh, be making a brisket today. This is the uh, brisket that I got in my True Local uh, box. And uh, if you wanna see the unboxing and all the other goodies that I got in the box, then I will link that video below so that you can see everything else I got. This is a two pound brisket. It's the smallest brisket I've ever made and I'm kind of excited about it because it's gonna fit in here. Normally, I buy briskets, they're, they're huge. Sometimes I can barely lift them into the cart. And um, they generally take all day to cook in the oven because they're so big, for one thing. Um, but this one, I am going to be able to cook it in here, so it's gonna be the easy method, you know, e easy beef brisket. It's going in there, you set it and forget it. So I am first going to take it out of the bag and put a rub on it. Um, so I'm just gonna grab some scissors for that. I actually weighed it, it's actually over two and a half pounds. The packing slip that I got with my True Local box said it was two, a two pound brisket. So bonus, an extra half a pound there. So I just want to dry it off nicely because I want the dry rub to stick to it. Just uh, using a lot of paper towels to get it good and dry. Um, later in the video, I'm also gonna give you uh, my top five tips to get a good brisket result. And one of them, the first one, I'll summarize them later, but the first one is making sure you get a brisket that has lots of fat in it and don't trim it away. Just, just leave it on there because it's going to help in the cooking process. Now, granted, I didn't have any choice with this. They just shipped it to me um, and, and I'm okay with that. It looks, it looks pretty good. There's lots of fat in here. And uh, you know, the thing with brisket is that you have to cook it low and slow. You want the fat to melt right into the meat and um, that is going to make it juicy and tender at the end of the cooking time. So I'm just gonna wash my hands real quick and we're going to rub it and start the cooking process. Okay, so I made a, I made a rub um, and this is a hack, it's a real hack. I have some sugar-free taco seasoning in, in my cupboard and all I did was add a tablespoon of uh, Swerve brown sugar and mixed it up because uh, I wanted sort of a um, smoky hot, like hot smoky sweet, smoky sweet, that's what I wanted. So, there, so this is gonna have a bit of a bite to it but also sweet. And um, that's what I wanted. Now, if you're doing, if you're doing sort of a clean carnivore, or you're doing uh, BBBE, you can just you can do this with salt. It's I've done it with salt before, and it's still going to taste really good at the end of the uh, at the end of the day. So oh, I'm getting it everywhere. Anyways, so I'm just going to rub this in as best I can. Could have picked a bigger board, but I didn't. I just want rub to be everywhere. On the brisket, I mean, not everywhere on the counter, but. When you're doing a long, slow cook, you really, it's hard to put too much flavor and seasoning into it, because a lot of it will, you know, cook away. And this is, you know, that's the same with uh, sous vide as well. You always want to put in probably more than you think would be necessary just to get really good flavor. Okay, so that's nicely covered. 
So I want to um, have a little bit of liquid in there, even though there's a lot of fat in here that's going to melt down. So I am going to use this uh, Primal Kitchen barbecue sauce. I don't have very much in here. Um, and I'm, I just want to use the rest of this up. So I'm going to fill this with hot water and, uh, and then I'm going to shake it up. And that should give me about a good cup or so of sauce. And uh, I'm gonna dump it in there and then put the meat in. I could have just used water, um, but this will give it just a little more flavor and uh, it will also use up the rest of the sauce. So I'm just gonna dump this in. Looks like we have about a cup of liquid and I'm going to put my brisket in. Now I would say you could do probably up to about a four pound brisket in, in here. Usually when I've made briskets in the past, they've been, you know, seven to 10 pounds. So um, that's harder to do in a crock pot. So I've got it set to low and I'm basically going to let this go for seven or eight hours. And then I will show you my five top tips and um, two of them involve what do you do with it at the end of the cooking time. And they're very important. So I'm, uh, I hope you stick around and see what they are and how this turns out. So I will see you guys in the next section when we're ready to make the magic happen even more. Okay, oh, look at this. This has been going for seven and a half hours. I am going to call it done. And the next step is I'm going to put it in the air fryer to sear it for, you know, maybe five minutes just to get some crustiness on, on top. Now, if you had been making this in the oven, you could put just put it under the broiler you can put it on your barbecue grill. You could put it, it, this one is small enough to put it in a cast iron pan. There's so many different ways you can sear it. Or you could just not sear it, but I just kind of like that final touch to it. So I am going to uh, bring my air fryer over here and uh, get it in there. It'll only take five minutes and then we'll be on to the next step. Okay, so I brought the air fryer over. Um, and I'm just going to uh, get that warmed up while it's warming up. Um, I just wanted to, to tell you the, so I'm, I'm just gonna do it in here for five minutes. I've set it at 390 air fry for five minutes and um, that should be enough to get it crispy, like kind of on the top. Um, and I, just a bit of caramel, caramelizing. And like I said, if you had like I, I could have put this in a pan and put it in the oven, but I feel like because of the small size, it's only two pounds. Two and a half pounds. Um, it'll be fine to put it in here and quicker and use less heat and electricity. I guess. We're just gonna wait for that to happen and then I'm just gonna transfer it right over. Then I'm gonna go over my, my five steps of brisket making because you're probably wondering why I have a cooler on the counter. I'm gonna share that secret with you in just a few moments. All right, so we're going to put the brisket in. This looks and smells amazing. Okay, so that's gonna go for five minutes. I'm going to move the crock pot out of the way. Now, before I take this away, there's a lot of juice in here. You can save this broth, because it's got barbecue sauce in it. You can, uh, you can simmer it on the stove and, and reduce it in size, and then it'll, it could be a thick gravy. I, I usually don't bother. I usually just pour it into a jar, save it. I save the fat for cooking. Um, and then the, the rest of it will become like a jello, which is nice. Uh, you can, it'll be a very flavorful beef jello. So, um, I mean, if I was making potatoes and rice and all those things that you don't have on keto, that's perfect. 
So the rest of your family might, lo might love that gravy. Okay, so let's talk about the five tips for making a good brisket. Um, the first one we already talked about earlier, it is choosing one that has a lot of fat. Don't cut the fat away. We, we want that while we're cooking. If you want to cut it away later, fine. But while it's cooking, you want that fat in there. So number two is cooking it long enough. You have to cook this for as long as possible. Well, there is a kind of a rule of thumb. So normally I'm cooking briskets that are seven, eight, nine, ten 10 pounds. It's about an hour per pound of cooking in the oven when you do it in the oven. Um, in the crock pot, which today I only had a two and a half pound uh, brisket, the timing is a bit different um, because because crock pot cooks differently and so I just generally no matter what the size if it fits in my crock pot it doesn't really matter what the size is I'll cook it all day seven or eight hours so you want to cook it long and you want to cook it at low so that's your third point is to cook it low enough the long slow cooking and and in the oven low would be 250 275 um, in the crock pot, you know, you're already cooking really low, so that's okay. Um, so the reason for the long, slow cook is you want to melt all those connective tissues that are inside the brisket, and that is what is going to make it tender. The next one is resting, and that's why I have this. So... A brisket should rest for about 10 minutes per pound. Now that is challenging for a large brisket, um, but I have heard people saying, nope, I let it rest for an hour. And so I think anything over about five, six, seven pounds, I think an hour is probably plenty. Um, this smaller one, I'm gonna rest it for 20 minutes and a what you want is you want to keep the, the juices in, and I'm kind of hesitant. I used to wrap things in foil for that, but I don't want to do that anymore. So <clears throat> this is perf a perfect size for, I would say up to about a four or five pound piece of meat to rest. I've lined it with, uh, with a silicone cookie liner, so I've got that in there. And I have got a... Um, a loaf pan that kind of fits in here and is flexible. And so my plan is to move, oh, look at this thing. Wait, wait, we gotta get a shot of this. This looks amazing, it's all, oh, it looks like it was smoked, it's somewhere. Okay, so here is our piece of meat. I am going to put it in here in my silicone loaf pan close the lid and we're just going to leave that for 20 minutes so that it's just going to rest in its juices. Then we're going to slice it and that is point number five, slicing it properly. And so I'm going to show you how to do that when we come back. We'll see you in the next segment. Hey, right, so um, after I put this in here, I decided I was going to put down some layers because I, I realized there was quite a bit of air in here and I wanted to, you know, have less air. So I put down a layer of parchment and on top of the brisket and on top of that some foil just to just to keep it uh, down there. And now we're going to take this out, put it on the board for cutting. So cutting it is important because you want to slice against the grain. And sometimes that's hard to see, and it's hard to find it. So, um, you know, you might need to just make a cut and then go in a different direction. So I'm thinking just from the past, let me just flip this over for a second. I'm thinking it's going to be this way. And you can tell because Let's get the camera in here nice and tight. Uh, maybe I, I'm just gonna take a bigger piece off and then you'll be able to see it better. 
what you want to see is those these little circles. They're all, that's about the best way I can think to describe it. Those little circles that shows you're cutting against the grain. You've got short little circles surrounded by melted connective tissue. And that is what you want. You want those nice slices. If we sliced it this way, the strings of meat would be long and then that would be tough. You wouldn't be able to chew it. But if you do it this way, basically this should just break apart with your fork like that. So if you can break it apart with your fork, so you can sort of see how that goes, then, then that is what you're looking for. So if it was long, you wouldn't be able to do what I just did there. So, so I am going to give this a taste. This looks very good. It smells amazing. Mm. And most importantly, it just falls apart in your mouth. And that's what you want. You don't want stringy meat. So um, I'm going to uh, finish slicing this up and I'm going to pour, I did decide to cook the gravy after all, and I'm going to pour a little on top. And then um, that is what is going to be for dinner. The other thing is slice it thin like this. You've got leftovers for sandwiches. I mean, unless you have a whole bunch of people over, there'll be leftovers. On the next video, I'm going to make some keto brisket sliders. And um, that will involve actually frying some of this up to get crispy bits, which I love, and putting it on some, I was thinking of maybe doing some sweet, sweet loaf sliders or sweet breads. Anyways, you'll see. I'll decide that before the next video. In the meantime, I'm going to slice this up and uh, put the gravy on, so I'll show that to you in a minute. I've finished slicing it up. I did make the, the gravy, and really all I did was I poured the juices, I reduced it, I simmered it on the stove until it was reduced to half. So, you know, it's really, it's really just the juices of what we cooked. So I'm gonna put a couple of pieces on the plate here. Just can hardly wait to eat this. And then just pour a little gravy on it. And look at that. That, that is going to be, well, I'll probably have more, but that's gonna be dinner. So I uh, hope you'll join me on the next video when we turn the leftovers into something delicious. And I hope you try making a brisket sometime. It's super easy and you, you know, a four or five pound piece of meat will feed a whole family plus leftovers. Um, and I, I think it's good enough for guests too. So um, enjoy and we'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.